Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be revising potential dividers. As always, I'm going to be following the OCR Physics A specification. However, the knowledge will be applicable to all exam boards. Okay, well, let's get started. Now, first off, what is a potential divider? In electronics, we need different amounts of potential differences for various different components and different pieces of equipment. For instance, we may be given a six volt cell as illustrated here. However, we can control the amount of voltage output by adding in some resistors in the circuit. For instance, in this circuit, I have a fixed resistor of uh, resistance 100 ohms, and I also have an LDR, a line dependent resistor, which at the moment, at the current line intensity, let's say it has a thousand ohms. Now, depending where I choose to put the output of the circuit, I'm going to get different voltages. Let me illustrate this. So what I'm going to do is let's say that we're going to have a look at the output across the LDR. I'm going to call this V out. The first formula that we're going to be looking at is as follows. V out is equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 multiplied by V in. Now it is important to note that in this equation, R2 is the resistance across the component that we've chosen to measure the output voltage. So for instance, if our V out is across here, this 1000 ohm resistor, then our R2 will be 1000. So this means that we can calculate V out directly, and this will be equal to 1000, which will be our R2 divided by R1 plus R2, which is going to be 1000 plus 100, like so. All of this is multiplied by our input voltage, which is just 6 volts. So that's the EMF in the circuit. And if we were to plug this into a scientific calculator, we're going to get approximately 5.45 volts as the output voltage across the LDR. Now in this equation over here, we choose where we want to calculate the output voltage. Let me illustrate this. Let's imagine that we have a very similar circuit. We have an 8 volt cell, then we have an LDR which has been set to, let's say, 2000 ohms, and we have a 200 ohm fixed resistor. What is the potential difference across the fixed resistor? So once again, our V out is going to be across here. So I can just use my formula saying that V out is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times the input voltage. R2 is the potential, is the resistance across the two points where we're measuring the potential difference. So in this case, this will be 200 divided by R1 plus R2, which is going to be 200 plus 2000 multiplied by the input voltage, which now is 8 volts. And plugging that into a scientific calculator and um, up to a couple of significant figures, we're going to get 0 0.73 volts. Another equation which we are given in the formula sheet is the following. V1 over V2 is equal to R1 over R2. Now in the following equation, V1 is the potential difference across one of the components. So let's say that this one here is V1. V2 is the potential difference across the other component. So in this case, let's write it like so, V2 is actually equal to three and a half volts. R1 is going to be this resistance, the one that we're looking for in here, and R2 will be the resistance of the other component, which in this case is 700 
50 ohms. Now, if we know three of those quantities, we can work out the fourth. Now, in this equation, we know that this uh, voltage is 3.5 volts. Well, hang on a minute. If our EMF is 6 volts, we need that this means that V1 is going to have to be 6 minus 3.5, which is 2.5 volts. Now, let's see whether we can figure out what R1 is. Our first step would be to rearrange for R1. So in this case, this is relatively straightforward. So R1 will be equal to V1 over V2 multiplied by R2. We know that our V1, once again, is the potential difference across this resistor, which is 2.5 divided by V2, which is 3.5, multiplied by the second resistor, which is 750 ohms, so times 750. And if we put that into a scientific calculator, we're going to get 535.7, so let's call that 536 ohms. Just as a little aside, if you're struggling sometimes to rearrange this equation, one thing that you could do is cross multiplication. So essentially, this times this will equal this times this. In other words, V1 times R2 will be equal to R1 times v2 and then depending what we want to rearrange for afterwards uh, we could do that for instance if we're interested in r2 we can just say that r2 will be r1 times v2 divided by v1 so this was just a quick little exam tip Okay guys, now that we've looked at the most common equations for potential dividers, let's have a look into LDRs, the line dependent resistors and the thermistors. Now a line dependent resistor is very often used in potential divider circuits. For instance, uh, this is the symbol of an LDR. You will come across it in potential divider circuits all the time. And this over here on the right is the symbol for a thermistor. Now, there are two very important graphs to remember. They, they are extremely similar. The resistance of an LDR decreases as light intensity increases. Very, very similarly, the resistance of a thermistor decreases as temperature increases. A good, good rule of thumb to remember is that if the temperature is going up, the resistance of the thermistor is doing the opposite. Or if the light intensity is going up, the resistance of the LDR is doing the opposite. And now let's have a look at one of the most typical potential divider questions. These types of questions can have multiple variations, so I'm going to do a couple of the most common ones. Imagine that we have a circuit in which we have a fixed resistor and an LDR. We also have a voltmeter reading across here. The question is asking us what will happen to the voltmeter reading if the light intensity decreases. So let's have a look at my solution over here. Our first step is to consider the resistance of the LDR as light intensity decreases. Just to remind you of the graph that we looked at up here, we can clearly see as light intensity decreases, the resistance increases. Therefore, that's my first marking point. The resistance of the LDR increases as light intensity decreases. This means that the total resistance in the circuit will be increasing. Now, if the resistance is increasing, the current will do the opposite. So the current will be decreasing because I is equal to V over R. We assume that the total EMF, let's call it V, is fixed in the circuit. And if R goes up, I must go down. Afterwards, we're going to look at the potential difference across the fixed resistor. Now, across this resistor, V is going to equal to I times R. Let me just write this a little bit more clearly. But across this resistor, V will be 
equal to i times r. Now, r is fixed. This means that it doesn't change. Now, if your current is decreasing, so i is going down, this would mean that v will be going down as well because r is constant. So the PD across the fixed resistor will be decreasing because the current is decreasing. V is equal to IR and R is fixed. Now if the PD across the fixed resistor is going down, this means that the PD across the LDR must go up because they have to add up to the fixed EMF, and this is a statement of Kirchhoff's second law. In other words, if the voltage across here goes down, the voltage across the LDR must go up and vice versa. With this way of structuring the answers, we're almost guaranteed to get the maximum marks in all of those questions. We can summarize this by the following strategy. We first look at the resistance, R, then we move on to the current, I, then we look at the fixed resistor. This is the step that most people get wrong, so we must always look at the fixed resistor first. And then finally, we need to look at the component, which is either the LDR or the thermistor that I've written in brackets over here. Now, here is something interesting. Very often I would read answers when I'm marking work, which uh, might sound a lot, something like, uh, let's say that people tend to get the first two marks right, but then afterwards, um, we could use some incorrect reasoning, so I'm going to just make you aware of this on what not to do. So quite often you might uh, read something such as V across the LDR is equal to the current times the resistance, and if the resistance of the LDR goes up, then V of the LDR will go up as well. Unfortunately, this is completely um, incomplete, no pun intended, because this will only be true if the current is constant. But the current here is not constant. In fact, the current is decreasing. And we don't actually know which one is increasing or decreasing at a faster rate. So therefore, the only way of answering those questions is to have a look at the fixed resistor. So this is really, really important. We start off with the resistance of the LDR in the circuit, moving on to the current, then the fixed resistor, and finally the component. Now let's have a look at a thermistor question. Okay guys, well, let's tackle the next question. We have the following circuit. We have a potential divider with a fixed resistor and a thermistor. We also have a voltmeter across the thermistor. The question is asking us what will happen to the reading of the voltmeter if the temperature within the circuit is increasing. Now, our first step would be to have a look at the resistance. So remember, um, we're gonna have a look at RIF, resistance, current, fixed resistor, and finally we're going to look at the component. Well, starting off with the resistance, then the resistance of the thermistor will be decreasing as temperature increasing. Remember, the resistance always, the, always does the opposite with a thermistor and an LDR compared to the temperature of the light resistance. So let's, uh, let's write this down. And what I'm going to write for my first point is that as temperature increases, the resistance of the thermistor will decrease. And therefore, the resistance in the circuit will decrease. So this could be our first important point. Now, from the resistance, we're going to move on to the current. So for our second point, I'm going to say that the current, that will do the opposite to the resistance, so this would mean that the current will increase. Remember, I is inversely proportional to the resistance, assuming that the EMF uh, V is fixed, of course. In other words, this cell is not changing 
which uh, it's not in this case. After the current, we're going to have a look at the fixed resistor. Now, across the fixed resistor, V is equal to I times R. Now, we know that R is fixed, so I'm just going to write the fixed over here, and if I is increasing, this means that V will also be increasing. So across the fixed resistor over here, and this will be our third marking point, I'm going to write that the PD across the fixed resistor will be increasing due to the current, which is increasing. Remember, V is equal to IR, R is fixed, and the current is increasing. Due to Kirchhoff's second law, if the PD across the fixed resistor goes up, then the PD across the thermistor will go down. So the PD across the thermistor will decrease as they have to add up to the sum of the EMFs, and in other words, this is just Kirchhoff's second law. Notice something really interesting. In both of those cases, we've, we have created some sensing circuits which actually sense their environments. They are sensors. In the first case, we have a circuit um, which, when the light intensity decreases, in other words, uh, we take the circuit to a dark room and maybe day turns to night, the PD across the LDR will be increasing. In other words, our output voltage across here will be going up. Well, this circuit can have multiple applications. It could be used in street lighting. It could be used as some sort of a light sensor to give us information. Um, it could also be a light that automatically turns on, or we could connect a motor that does something, etc. We have so many different options in electronics. Now, this one here, though, we have a circuit, and after the temperature reaches a a certain threshold and it starts to increase, let's say, then the PD across here will be decreasing. Well, we could put this in I don't know, an oven, for instance, and uh, the PD here will be decreasing with temperature, maybe even reaching the, towards zero after you reach a certain temperature threshold, etc. We could build all sorts of very, very interesting applications. Okay, well, okay, guys, well, we have um, managed to do quite a lot of revision today of various different problems. Hopefully, this was useful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm going to see you guys in the next video.